So this is what's left of the power supply of this AFX 107 preamp. Uh, the transformer of the power supply in the converter circuit was blown completely and melted. I'll try to show you closer if I can focus on it. So, at first I thought that I can rewind it, but when I start taking it apart, it's just all melted and glued like a piece of lava from volcano. So I couldn't do anything about that. And uh, the rest of the parts seem okay. But you can see that the burn marks here, uh, it was very hot. And you can see the burn marks on the enclosure too. So I just gave up on this supply and uh, tried a different approach. Which is to uh, build a suitable power supply that gives the same voltages that we need. And I'm going to show you right now which voltages we need for this unit. So this is schematic of the power supply. Uh, usual stuff, it's, uh, it takes AC power adapter which rectifies it with this bridge rectifier and feeds to the this national semiconductor uh, chip for the uh, buck or flyback converter uh, and uh, this is flyback transformer and it gives different voltages for the purpose of powering this preamp which are 12 volts for powering tube filaments and all relays which are rated at 12 volts DC. Then we have a regular minus 16 plus 16 volts uh, for the uh, op amps rails and uh, plus 50 volts that's for the tube plates, so called starving tube plates voltage and also fits the um, output stage of the uh, preamplifier. So we need uh, 12 volt plus minus 16 and 50 volts. As far as I understand 12 volts is going to be uh, eating most of the power because the uh, tube 12 a AX7 or AU7 um, it, at 12 volts it's minimum 150 milliamps plus all the relays because all the buttons and uh, switches on the uh, unit uh, controllable by relays if you engage relay it will eat more power so that's the story so here's the schematic of my uh, power supply which is uh, made uh, out of uh, regular available parts which is a uh, 7, 8, 12 uh, voltage regulator for 12 volts plus 12 volts for the filaments and the relays and uh, two isolated DC to DC converters which give the output of plus minus 15 volts so the way it works the DC uh, 14 15 volts range uh, comes here and powers three units which is regulator and two DC to DC converters the second DC to DC converter is uh, they isolated so the outputs can be configured the way you like it so it gives it takes the plus 15 volt rail and on top of it it gives 30 volts more of the uh, plus minus connected in series so here's 15 30 volts, sorry, and plus 15. So to the ground we get 45 volts, which is going to be the um, phantom power and the output stage power. It's 5 volts less than uh, uh, required on schematics, but uh, it's adequate enough. I checked already for the phantom powering and uh, for the output stage. I did the same type of power supply for several Soundcraft mixers which were uh, re-built um, for the purpose of uh, 
field use without the AC power supply. So you can power this with a 12, let's say, volt battery uh, from the car or just any powerful battery, NP type or whatever, Sony type of battery. Um, and uh, for this unit we need at least 14 volts DC to uh, make sure that 7A12 works perfectly with the 12 volt regulation. So this is it. Uh, the uh, additional filtering capacitor is not shown here, but basically that's what we need. Uh, we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 voltages for powering our unit. And it looks like um, I just put it together and uh, it fits perfectly in the space of the old power supply. And it looks like this. This is how I adjust DC offset null. Service manual it says adjust DC offset null so that the voltage observed at the TP101 is unchanged as the gain part is advanced. So that's the gain part. If I turn it up and down you see that the voltage changes. The view is a little bit fuzzy because it's very low level. It's now 20 millivolts DC. But you can see that it jumps up and down. So I have to adjust the null or null, whatever you like better. This way, when I turn it, it doesn't jump. Here we go. See, it stopped. Solid. I changed the gain and the voltage doesn't change. So now it means that I adjusted DC offset null how it's supposed to be. So the same I have to do with the second channel. So far so good. So it's all finished. I installed a new AC DC actually. Adapter jack here for the external DC power supply. And uh, that's how it looks. It sounds really nice, I like it, very low noise, very functional, has uh, all the things you need. It has a pad, 20 dB pad, it has a low cut, polarity and phantom power for each channel. So it's two channel, fully functional, nice microphone preamp and with the indication of signal and overload. And the output also it has a foot switch for muting, but I don't think anybody will use it ever. And uh, level, output level, plus 4, minus 10, which is very nice too. You can use it with different types of uh, audio interfaces. So I recorded the um, sound samples, acoustic guitar through uh, Rode NT5 microphone, and electric guitar through this Rapco Horizon direct box injection, just transformer based injection box. And here are the samples. Check one, two. Ooh, hey.
Thank <laughs> you.